Hi folks, I want to do the weekly overview for next week. I mean, typically I do it on Mondays. Uh, sometimes it's even posted on, on like early, early Tuesday morning. But today is Saturday and for next week I want to post it because really when we look at next week, after the full moon tomorrow on the 21st, um, we have the sun entering Leo on the 22nd and the sun opposing Pluto on the 22nd. All of this has been covered in my full moon in Capricorn video that I posted yesterday or in the weekly overview for this coming week that I took us to July the 22nd that I posted earlier this week. So as far as I'm concerned, this past week culminates in the full moon in Capricorn tomorrow and the day after that the sun enters Leo and opposes Pluto, right? We, we, sorry, my laptop is kind of doing updates. Um, that's already been covered, whether it's part of the full moon in, oh my God, this annoying frigging thing. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Thank you for that, allowing me to get that done and going. I'm trying to like, you guys know just where I'm at sort of when I'm doing these videos and how any noise just bothers the crap out of me when I'm kind of in this place that I'm doing these videos. Okay, wow, it must be a full moon. So, so the full moon video and the weekly overview, full moon video from yesterday, weekly overview from earlier this past week, takes us to the 22nd with the sun entering Leo and opposing Pluto. Fine, done. Outside of that, for the rest of the week, we only have two things occurring. We have on the 25th, Mercury entering the sign of Virgo. Now, Mercury is going to enter the sign of Virgo on the 25th, and on August the 4th or the 5th, wherever you are, he's going to go retrograde. I've already done a video on Mercury's shadow period and retrograde last week. Number two, on the 26th, the day after that, Chiron goes retrograde. Fine. I'm not concerned about Chiron going retrograde. As you know, you guys know that if you guys have a planet that is retrograde in your birth chart, there's every possibility or chance that when that planet is retrograde in the skies, you will feel its impact and what it is trying to achieve through a particular transit more. If you have a planet direct in your birth chart, you will likely feel its impact and what it is trying to do in its current transit in the skies, in whatever part of the birth chart, in whatever part of your char chart, whatever house is occupied by the sign it is currently transiting uh, at that particular time. Let me be even more specific because that was convoluted. So we have Chiron going over the sign of Aries right now. If Chiron is direct in your birth chart, you will feel what Chiron is trying to do for you in the house occupied by the sign of Aries when Chiron is direct. If Chiron is retrograde in your birth chart at the time of your birth, you will likely feel the impact of what Chiron is trying to do in the part of the chart occupied by Aries, the house occupied by the sign of Aries in your birth chart and what that stands for when Chiron is retrograde in the skies. These planets, Chiron, um, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, move slowly and whatever healing Chiron is trying to achieve, it's going to, you know, it takes a certain amount of time and Chiron is going to go forward and backwards and forward and backwards and forward and backwards and forward and backwards before it moves into Taurus. So, and it's not as if Chiron this year does not have a certain amount of importance considering the last solar eclipse we had on April the 8th of this year. It was conjunct Chiron to the minute. But we have the larger question is, and this is something you can experiment with if you have Chiron retrograde in your birth chart, while Chiron is retrograde, do you feel the impact of what is being healed and your examination of whatever wound, whatever it is that has separated you from your kind of original unsullied self, um, whether you feel the effect of pondering that, examining that, um, identifying the causes for that separation or that woundedness and healing it, is that stronger for you when Chiron is retrograde because you have Chiron retrograde in your birth chart um, or not? Now, at the end of the day, the slower planets work certain degrees of the chart 
multiple times as they go back and forth. And so anyone who's really tracking this, you can, you can, you, you know, if you're really interested in something like this, you can try and get a sense of which degrees Chiron has gone direct on, what degrees it's going to go back on, uh, how much it's going to, you know, when is it going to go direct, what degrees are impacted, what was happening then. If you really want to study that more, you're welcome to. I don't know that it's necessarily that relevant or important given everything else that we are pondering and dealing with. Okay, so Mercury enters Virgo. Fine. Mercury shadow degrees are from about 21 degrees of Leo to 4 degrees of Virgo. Mercury goes retrograde on um, August the 4th and 5th, and it makes certain aspects three times when it is retrograde. It um, specifically trines Chiron in Leo squares Uranus, uh, a square that occurs tomorrow for the first time, uh, three times. And both of those are when it is in Leo. One of the things when Mercury is going retrograde one of the things to always ponder is what is developing? What is about to happen when Mercury goes retrograde? Because chances are when Mercury is direct on August the 28th, and as it clears its shadow degrees uh, on September the 11th, whatever that thing is may then occur after this period of rethinking going back to the drawing board uh, period that this Mercury retrograde is going to be about or that August is going to be about. So where does Virgo sit in your birth chart? What house does it occupy? What is developing there in terms of uh, mercurial activity, communications, processing, transacting, that then in August has to pause. We wait for Mercury to do its thing. While Mercury is retrograde, you know, it's interesting, Venus is going to come into Virgo, and she's going to conjunct the retrograde Mercury um, in Virgo on August the 7th. And um, Venus is going to be in Virgo, let me just give you these dates, not that it's massively important or relevant, but why not? Let's just, this is one of those weekly overviews, because there's a couple of things, I'm spending time going over things in greater detail that I normally would not, but why not? Um, we're here, we're hanging out. Uh, Venus is in Virgo between August the 5th and August the 29th. So during August, Venus in Virgo, Venus, Venus, and of course, you know, the sun comes into Virgo on August the 22nd. During August, Venus is going to provide the opportunity and the gift that then starts to get developed, especially because we're talking about Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury. Whatever that gift is, is going to start to get developed more after Mercury goes direct. What I just said, if you really want to understand what I just said, Mercury goes into Virgo on July the 25th. On July the 26th, Chiron goes retrograde. That is all the general astrological activity for next week. And you guys who've been watching my weekly overviews know that typically weeks are not so benign. And Mercury going into Virgo, yep, it leaves Leo, goes into Virgo. But I would watch my Mercury shadow. I, what I'm trying not to do is give you a, the whole video again for Mercury retrograde. And I've done that earlier this week. Take a look at that. At the end of the day, there are other videos. If I were to summarize this coming week, I'm going to build on the full moon in Capricorn video I did yesterday and the weekly overview I did for this past week that I did early in the week and say that the week after a full moon is the most balanced energy to get things done. It is important from my perspective, looking at the astrology, to continue to move forward in a desired direction during this coming week through Sunday the 28th and indeed even till about the 31st 
at, of July 1st of August. Just by the time you get to the 1st, 2nd of August, you're going to experience the chaos of Mercury stationary in the sky and you're going to experience the kind of bleakness and the darkness and the flatness and the exhaustion that comes when the moon starts to get dark before a new moon. The next new moon is on August the 4th in Leo. Mercury going into Virgo on the 25th is more significant for the fact that Mercury is the primary area where Mercury is going to rework when he's in ret his retrograde is going to be in Leo from 21 degrees of Leo to the end of Leo. And yes, Mercury goes into Virgo, but for some reason feels the need to go back and tread over those last 10 degrees of Leo once in reverse and then, of course, when it's direct. There's a reason why there's a reason why our forward movement in May, June, and July needs to pause in August and get a reality check. And we need to trust that. And it has less to do with, it's intriguing that Mercury goes into Virgo briefly and then comes back. As I said, there's something about August where we need to go back to the drawing board based on what we learn and we need to incorporate that before we move forward. And after September, it's all systems go. The acceleration starts up again. I would say the video on the full moon that I did yesterday is important to watch. The weekly overview I did earlier last week actually gives a pretty good summary of the time we're in and even heading to the full moon. I did a video on the new eclipses on the Pisces Virgo axis that I think is important considering that all of next week, this past week and all of next week, we may continue to see eclipsy events occur that announce what is on the agenda and what is developing as we head towards the first Pisces lunar eclipse on September 17th. These Pisces Virgo eclipses are going to be stronger in 2025 and 2026. But you know, there's certain things that I will say as an astrologer that are acts of, that feel like acts of faith, even though I am saying them based on the data that I see. And one of them, as I've said to you, and I always say it with trepidation because it's something that I have never seen said anywhere else, but I have noticed that two months before a lunar eclipse, for whatever reason, the week before and week after. You can make that two months before July 17th, week before, week after July the 17th, because the eclipse is on September 17th. You can make it the week before, week after the full moon on the 21st. Has eclipsy resonances, unmistakably. And it's the first of these periods associated with the new set of eclipses that are coming in on the Pisces Virgo axis. So personally, as far as this coming week is concerned, what are the opportunities you're moving towards? What is the desired direction that you've been trying to move towards since April of last year? Knowing that you are in the middle of a timeline that takes you to June of next year, the end of the first week of June of next year, at least for that timeline to complete. What are the situations that are being created out of necessity and crisis that are demanding you to take action? What are the doors that are open? What are the doors that close? What if you are trying to move in a desired direction? What needs to be done where you are right now to for you to be in a state of preparation that when the opening comes for you to move in that direction, you are ready? What needs to be cleaned up where you're at? I would use the next 10 odd days to make as much progress on all of that as you can. Understanding that after the full moon tomorrow, the energies may be more balanced and may allow you to get things done. Because when August comes, even starting August 1st, 2nd, you're going to feel the need for that pause button and for you to be in receiving mode as opposed to in acting mode. In August, we're going to need to let spirit, the universe, Mercury retrograde, inform us, tell us what is in our blind spot and incorporate that before we move forward. That reality check is important. And yes, Mercury goes into Virgo for three or four days. And I would pay attention to, I would have a gentle curiosity about Mercury during its 
you know, shadow degrees and going into Virgo and what's going on and kind of keep a healthy curiosity about it going retrograde and direct over these degrees, 21 degrees Leo to four degrees Virgo. But Mercury retrograde may well bring up reality checks about forward movement since May, June and July, during May, June and July, and not just related to the shadow period. At least that's my experience. Mercury retrogrades may also bring information about projects, jobs, um, events that were started or had prominent developments while Mercury was retrograde before. So that's all I have to say. It's a 15 minute weekly overview. Surprise, surprise, it's a short video. If you feel like, hmm, what do I really need to watch? I would say the full moon in Capricorn video yesterday, the weekly overview, I almost prefer the full moon in Capricorn video is fine and it's helpful and it has some information. I almost prefer the weekly overview I did earlier last week. And then I would definitely, the Mercury retrograde sits a little bit differently and separate. You know, a lot of the lunar energy and not just the lunar energy, but even the energies that we're dealing with, have been dealing with currently, are associated with the signs of Cancer and Capricorn. We haven't quite, we, Mercury and Venus have been in the sign of Leo for a bit. Mercury since July the 2nd, Venus since July the 11th. And we can feel things brewing, but because of this retrograde, we're really not feeling the full impact of that. The sign of Leo becomes an important sign for the remainder of this year. Not only because we're gonna have a communication cycle that's gonna start up in August, that's gonna take us into November, December in the sign of Leo. And also because when Mars enters Leo later this year, he's gonna go retrograde. So he's gonna work some of these degrees that we've seen ourselves deal with in July as the planets have, personal planets, the Sun, Mercury, Venus, the new moon in Cancer, have gone over Cancer into Leo, opposed Pluto, trined Saturn, trined Neptune. Mars comes into kind of play in this arena in the last couple of months in the, of this year and the first couple of months of next year. So there's this awareness of things. To, so whatever we're dealing with today may very well have a sense of planets going through the sign of Cancer, trining Neptune, trining Saturn, uh, the new moon in Cancer on July the 5th, trining Saturn. The full moon in Capricorn tomorrow, trining the sun, trining Neptune, and the full moon trining Mars and Uranus. You know, all of that very current en energy is fine. There's a sense of pregnancy around the transits through the sign of Leo and even through the sign of Virgo as being directly affected by the Mercury retrograde that is coming up in August. And so, I would watch the full moon in Capricorn video and the weekly overview from last week to get a sense of where we are. I would watch the Mercury shadow period and retrograde video to get a sense of what is coming up, particularly in August as we head into September. And I would also watch the um, eclipse video I did on the new set of eclipses because it gives you a sense of a timeline between now and September, but also looking ahead to February 2027. There are a couple of other videos I did Uranus trining Pluto and Mars conjuncting Uranus, which strangely enough, that was the video that's gotten the most views that I think while are interesting, Uranus trine Pluto doesn't really occur till from 26 to 28. I would say if you have time, you can watch it and you can get to it. Mars conjunct Uranus has happened at this point in time. If you are interested in looking at it, you can, but you can also let it be at this point in time. You know, in other words, I'm trying to say to you that the, this next week is important, but in terms of current transits, there's not a lot going on, which is great. I will maintain that what I've said from my perspective in the full moon in Capricorn video I did yesterday has integrity in what I'm saying to you right now, which is make hay while the sun is still shining over the next 10 days or so. Once you get into August, August becomes a gnarlier month. So whatever the desired direction is you want to move in, this next week the energy is going to be more balanced and you will find it easier to be productive once the full moon is behind you. Try to clean up where you are and to be in a state of readiness. Um, 
go towards what it is that you want. Let necessity guide you with the things that you need to take care of so they don't turn into a full-blown crisis. Um, but whatever it is that you're trying try to push for, understand that you're also in the middle of a narrative that started in April of last year and takes you to June of next year. So don't get too wedded to expecting uh, decisive conclusions at this point in time. I would say you're really getting on the plane and the plane is going to have fits and starts and bumps on its journey in September. And that's the journey we're looking at. September to the end of the first week of June is an arc of completion. Moving towards becoming clearer, becoming more decisive about where you're going to end up, what the Aries Libra eclipses have been about for you. Um, and during that time, as I said, there are two Mercury, more Mercury retrogrades, a Venus retrograde, a Mars retrograde. But it's going to be this kind of three steps forward, two steps backwards, three steps forwards, two steps backwards that we're going to do. September, October till the middle of November, that is going to be forward movement. But starting October 2nd, when we're talking about the eclipse of release, it's going to be this energy of moving towards something, releasing where we are, moving towards something, releasing where we are, readjusting what we're doing and what we thought we knew and what we don't know. It's it's a real kind of twister of change with acceleration and pauses between September and um, the end of the first week of June next year. Um, so over the next 10 days, try and prepare for that as best you can by taking action because the onus is on you. In August, you're really waiting for guidance with regard to what you need to incorporate, what you need to realize. You, are, you may well, those things that are feel to you are either not developing or you don't have answers for, you don't have clarity around, you may get some of that information in August when Mercury goes retrograde and says, let me just give you some information here about what is really going on so that you can understand what assumptions you've been making and what is really real. And even if some of what is being shared is disappointing or frustrating, at least you can incorporate it into your plans and feel as you move forward after September that you're more grounded with regard to what basket you're investing your eggs in and whether you need to let certain things go and move in certain directions or, you know, how you need to go about it. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, as always, you know, if, if, if you found this video useful, feel free to share, tell your friends about it, etc. Um, the information is there for anybody who might find it useful, so feel free to get it to them. Uh, if you would like me to take a look at your birth chart and give you a reading, or make an easy to read version of your chart. My contact information email address is in the description box below. You can use that to contact me for rates and offerings. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. By the end of this month, I am not posting astrology videos on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, subscribe to the channel here. Click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Hover over it. There's a wiggly bell on top. Click on that. You'll be notified whenever I do new videos. You can use the thanks button to contribute the channel if you want. Comment, like if you feel inspired to do so this video it will help give these videos greater circulation. I'll be the first to acknowledge that this is almost, it's a weekly overview because I do them, but it is kind of a weekly overview that's a bit of an addendum because all that's happening is Mercury's changing signs and Chiron is going retrograde. The more important and relevant videos to ground you in the energy of now are the full moon and Capricorn video yesterday and the weekly overview from last week. If you're interested in the energies as to where they're headed, especially in August and into September, I would look at the Mercury shadow period retrograde video I did. And if you are even more interested in where it is that the eclipses are going, which is important to get grounded in, then take a look at the Pisces Virgo eclipse video. The other videos I've done over the past couple of, you know, past 10 days or so, the Mars conjunct Uranus, and the Uranus trine Pluto are less urgent. Okay, thank you very much. Take care.